If you're developing with Quarkus, then you're probably familiar with the Quarkus development mode, Quarkus Dev, that allows you to make some changes locally and see the changes immediately being reflected in your running application. But did you know that this also works in a remote development mode, remote dev, where you can connect to a Quarkus instance that's run somewhere, for example, in a Docker container or in a Kubernetes cluster, and then make the same changes, the same code changes locally and see the changes being reflected. So for example, if you have a setup that is a little bit more complex than just local host in a single process, assuming I have a coffee shop application here that uses a backend that is called Barista and a database and the coffee shop application is being accessed by the user, then I can run this in a setup that well just allows me to test this with a little bit more integrative tests where I can use the backend and the database and whatever and still see this, uh, the changes being reflected immediately. What I can do here with Quarkus. Assuming that is my application, coffee shop application, I use Maven, the same is true for, for Gradle, where this application uses the backend and the database. So what you can do, one thing, is you can go to your properties and configure, well, all of these connections. So you typically have something like a readable host name that will be resolved via a Docker networks and Kubernetes, so to have coffee shop DB. And then there are profiles available, uh, for example, dev profile and test profile that allows you to change the configuration depending on in which mode you run. So that would enable you to do this, to have a database, for example, running somewhere and you have a different way to connect to it if you run locally instead of running in some network already. This might help you. But to be honest, it depends how complex your application is. And the more you go away from simple Hello World like setups to more complex setups where you have a lot of integration, then it might be helpful to reduce the number of moving parts and to say you want to run in a setup that is actually closer to your production setup, even locally, where Docker containers, Docker Compose or Kubernetes uh, even locally can help you. So this is what I want to show you. I'm just ignoring um, these other modes and um, assuming I just want to connect to my application um, and external systems and databases in a normal way, um, similar to production, then what I can do, I can run this in a similar way, but have my remote uh, dev mode uh, running and remote connecting to Quarkus development mode that runs in the same way like my application would, for example, as a Docker container as well, or in Kubernetes even as well. What I can have coffee shop in um, Quarkus development mode, that would now be a Docker container um, where you have your Quarkus running and that connects to the same Docker networks, for, uh, for example, or we can have the same Docker volumes being set up and whatnot. And you still have the connection locally to your sources where you can make the changes, the source changes locally and see these changes being reflected. So that is um, uh, very interesting to set up and can help you a lot. Let's do this. I have two containers already running. This is my coffee shop um, DB, my database and my barista, my external systems. Let's ignore these um, for now that basically they're there. They run in a specific Docker network and I want to connect to them in my application. So what I can do, I basically can have a look at how I typically run my application in a Docker uh, container. That is a Docker image, a Docker file that produces my normal production image. I use Quarkus in a JVM mode uh, with Java 13 and with OpenJ9 um, JVM that runs here very well, but that is just normal configuration that runs in the normal mode. But now, if you have a look at the guide um, on the Quarkus website, it will tell you in order to run this development mode, you would need to run a Quarkus um, dev in the same way like you do with Maven or with Gradle. So what I do here, I use a different image. And that is now an example um, where you can base your application on that actually runs all that stuff in a similar way, like locally, I would do Maven Quarkus dev. So what I do, I say Maven Quark is dev, and then I have to set some properties uh, for URL remote access and some password, uh, which I just neglect for security here. And then I have a base image that of course runs Java, Java 13. So the version has to match. So your Maven build builds and uh, made three in this case. And I have to add my Palm XML and then my base sources to just 
initially being able to build and start up my application and then afterwards using this remote dev approach that will be changed but that will then start up and connect to my other components similar way uh, like in production let's do this i go to my application here and i want to build now this image that i call temp builder or whatever using this other docker file the docker dev uh, docker file dev or Dockerfile build or however you want to call it. And that will now build this temp builder image, which I can run. So of course you now would set up a script and I will show you this in a second, but just for you to see um, that I can do this um, manually, of course, as well. I now want to run my application in this mode. Let's say I want to bind this post um, port to localhost 8080, and then I run this in well, a specific network that is now very specific to my uh, setup. But assuming I need to configure some options here, I can also, you know, add some volumes, um, for example, and some other networks and whatnot. I want to add one volume that is a little bit of a well, time saver. So what I will do, I will just actually mount my Maven um, repository so it doesn't have to download the world. It just reuses what's already there on my local machine because that a Docker image that would be empty and then would just start, you know, downloading stuff, which of course works. But if you then restart it, you have to download again and that would just uh, take too much time. And what I do here, I then just run my temp builder image and then this starts up Maven in a similar way like you would um, assume locally if you run Maven Cork is dev. And that just then starts up my application and then connects to my database and my backend uh, and whatnot. So this works here. And then I can access my application. Actually, as always, I can say I want to have uh, my application here that has some basic um, hello resource with some uh, with some hypermedia type links. And of course, I can also access my orders that are now here empty. And then I can well post some new orders and create some orders in the system, which is now already interesting because that then, as you can see, there's some status transition that then uses the backend. And of course, they are being persisted in my database. So you see this already works. It can access the uh, external system and the database. But now even more importantly, what you actually wanted to do, you want to have this remote dev setup so that you can actually connect to it from my um, local sources. If I go to my project uh, here, then I want to be able to say, okay, that is my application coffee shop and I want to be able to connect to it. So what I do here, that will show you this um, prepared script in a second, I can have this uh, remote uh, dev approach where I basically connect uh, to my application using this um, target remote dev where I can have to uh, have to set the URL, which is 8080, and then, you know, this super secret password. And then it will connect to this process that runs remotely, which in my case is locally, but it is remote as it runs in a separate process in a separate container um, within a separate network. And now it will just connect to that. And basically all it does, it will listen to my code changes. So if I again say, girl, local host, please give me the this resource again. And now I can make some code changes. Let's go to this um, entity builder class. And instead of hello world, I say, well, goodbye world or hello something else. And then what it will do, it will just, you know, in the same way like you're familiar with um, the Quarkus uh, that runs a Maven, connect to that as well. You can change this again and remove that and then we'll just restart and very quickly give me this response. So this helps a lot by setting up um, components and scenarios that run in some more complex setup that use other systems. And especially it's helpful if you run that in a system test environment. So if you run a system test using Docker containers, Docker Compose, or even uh, Kubernetes such as Minikube locally, and just fire up the system tests against an environment, not only against an application and some mocks um, that run locally, but also in the same way like you run this in development mode. So you can do this uh, there as well. Run, uh, start your application slightly differently. For example, start a mock instead of the actual barista. Control this as part of your system test, and then have this development mode up and running. And you don't have to restart anything once it's running once. You just basically 
save uh, refresh you save your code changes it immediately has this connection reload your application you can run your system tests again and you always have a very fast feedback loop if you're interested in that I recorded a video course that's available on my blog uh, for free where I can have a similar approach and seeing um, showing that how this works um, using docker containers locally and the same uh, works with Quarkus if you use this Quarkus remote dev approach so in your application what you would do or in your project you would set up a script and now this approach it's well honestly it's a little bit hacky to say okay you start up a docker container where the image has a similar contents that you need in order to build your maven and whatnot um, but this just makes you much more effective in order to set that up i have one example and i share the code uh, with you where i have a shell script that just well starts up all of that approach one after another with some wait in place away so literally just start up a single um, script here and just wait for that setup and it fires up all your system test environment that I showed you in this diagram including these three containers your development mode and in one way where it can immediately then run your system tests and test your application very efficiently and now if you're interested how that works not only locally but also in Kubernetes well you can imagine two things either you just deploy the same thing that I do with docker run in a kubernetes cluster by just changing the image that definitely works if you set the uh, the correct properties here or even sim simpler I um, in the past created a video how to do a similar thing with telepresence um, so here this watch and deploy is another um, way it's basically something similar to Quark is dev for other um, Java EE application servers but you can do telepresence and then just start up a docker image similar way what I did with docker run but telepresence what it is it is a tool that connects to your Kubernetes cluster and basically swaps a single deployment a single instance with something that runs locally so then it's even easier you can say okay even something like maven uh, quark is dev or um, a quark is remote dev uh, container depends what you prefer can be run locally and then still can use the same resources and backends and um, databases that run inside kubernetes and i'm basically part of my cluster so there are a few different approaches that it can do but what i wanted to show you because uh, that might be um, not uh, not super intuitive how to come up with such a solution is how to run Quarkus with remote dev in docker containers with this approach of this um, docker image and of remote dev thanks a lot for watching